so folks, what I have for you today is a double dose of humiliation for old Donnie, both in what he's been saying and how that's playing out on the world stage, but also a brand new ruling by one of his own handpicked judges, one of the people that he specifically chose for a moment like this to rule in his broad favor went against him in a brutal way, not only ruling against the Trump position, but also doing so as a direct smack in the face to the Trump position in a way only a judge can do. Let's start with this reaction to Donald Trump and how he continues to lie about his time in office. Because what a lot of people have seen in recent speeches is him try to brag that America was respected around the world, but that's not the case. And then we'll get to how he got humiliated at home by his own personal judge. He loves she. He lo he, he's been talking about this president for life thing for a while now. He, had, he greatly admired how she was setting that up. He loves uh, Kim Jong-un, talks about the love letters. He, of course, has a warm place in his heart for Vladimir Putin, called him a genius uh, for invading Ukraine and what historians will see as perhaps the greatest military misstep uh, uh, since, uh, let's maybe the Germans declaring war on America in 41 when they didn't have to. Um, but at the same time, this guy hates democratically elected leaders. He hated Britain's prime ministers. He hated uh, Macron. He hates people that get elected in democratic systems. I, I'm just curious what you're taking. <laughs> Please, Jeez, explain. By the way, this guy was president of the United States, and I'm so glad that he's coming out talking again and reminding people what a thug he is, what a fascist he is, what a what, a th what an authoritarian he is. And if, if somebody out there on the internet does not believe he's those three things, please submit your essays. I, I look forward to reading them yeah. and grading them. What, what's so interesting, you take the three you mentioned, Xi Jinping, Vladimir Putin, uh, and Kim Jong-un. What does he have to show for it? North Korea, mm -hmm. busy shooting missiles, developing nuclear weapons, has far more missiles and nuclear weapons than it had uh, before he became president. Let's stop right there. Barack Obama, who we've talked about today. Obama said, your, your, your number one priority, your number one problem is going to be North Korea moving toward the development of, 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 of nuclear weapons that they can launch towards America. Donald Trump has been an abject fan. When I hear people going, oh, you know what, he, he was a blowhard, but he got a lot of good things. No, he didn't. He, uh, his, his grade on North Korea is an F. Everything that's happening right now is, 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 is owed in large part to Donald Trump. We got played on North Korea. China, Xi Jinping's now starting his third term. What has he done during his first two terms? He's consolidated power, repressed people, violated his international obligations on, on Hong Kong, uh, misled the world on, on COVID. Chinese economy went from double digit growth to now 3% growth. We could go on and on. He's, uh, you know, we've got that. And then, and then Vladimir Putin obviously has committed uh, the biggest violation of international law that we, we've seen. So it'd be one thing if outreach to authoritarians got you something but we got us not just nothing we're actually worse off in our relations all with all three, three of, of those something. authoritarians all three of them have behaved uh in a way that's far worse and let's go ahead and and talk about saudi arabia as well let's let's throw them into the lot he absolutely loves mbs and and has his behavior gotten better or worse since donald trump became president Obviously, uh, you know, you had Yemen, you had the Khashoggi murder and so forth. No, again, uh, it's okay to have a foreign policy that doesn't focus on the domestic nature of other countries. I, that's what realism is all about. But then you've got to focus on the foreign policy of other countries and begin to change it. And that's where essentially, uh, he, he, you know, we missed the ball there. Uh, also, as you say, we had terrible relations with Democrats, with Merkel, with the British, with the French, and so forth, with, Jap you know, with some of the people in Asia, with the exception probably of Japan. But we we're threatening to pull our forces out of South Korea. I was just in South Korea this week. The biggest question there, 60% of the people now of South Korea, Joe, what do they favor? Having their own nuclear weapons. Why? Because they face a growing threat from the North, and they no longer feel they can count on the United and, States. And, and why is that? Because Donald Trump 
But we, we had we had uh, Bob Woodward in on Friday. And what's he doing? He's he's you know bloviating about how the South Koreans owe their very existence to us, and they're going to have to pay us more money, or else he's going to pull the support. Right. Well, it basically, when the United States becomes unpredictable and undependable, every other government in the world, the national security advisors, national security advisors, take out the file and they call hedge against the United States doesn't have our back. And what that means is one of two options: they either defer or appease a powerful neighbor, an Iran, a China, or mm -hmm. Russia, or they become strategically autonomous. And ultimately, that means less American influence, and they start thinking about things like nuclear weapons. This is not the world we want to see. You know. So listen, what we're seeing right now is Donald Trump trying to, again, retcon history. This idea that the world didn't respect America pre-2016 and then immediately stopped respecting America in 2020, 2021 when he lost the election. It's all BS. Absolutely unadulterated BS. Donald Trump, if anything, went to some of the worst people in the world, some of the most problematic countries in the world, and not only tried to form relationships. I actually think it's good to try and form relationships relationships even with countries you disagree with because it's about you know promoting broader peace and reconciliation and all of that but you know bent the knee in some ways calling other world leaders kings just trying to give them sweetheart deals him and his family making all of these problematic connections in the middle east and then as soon as he's out of office his son-in-law you know his daughter and his son-in-law get this two billion dollar deal with the saudis all of it stinks and it's not a sign of a man that was making hard-nosed deals against some of the rough-and-tumble countries of the world, but rather a man who, when push comes to shove, was either weak, was either corrupt, or both at the exact same time. And often through his buffoonery, corruption, weakness, and then in the other end, just picking fights that didn't need to be picked, hurt Americans, hurt American farmers, American workers, hurt allies all around the world. But that's where it gets to back home. Because remember, Donald Trump picks judges as a form of bribery. That's not how it actually is. I'm not even saying that's how the judges see it, but that's how Donald Trump operates. And one of his handpicked judges just ruled against his best buddy, Mike Lindell, the My Pillow guy. But it was around a case specifically dealing with the broad investigations into Trump's big lie and Mike Lindell trying to hide his phone. And almost certainly there's going to be dirt on Trump directly and indirectly on Mike Lindell's phone in the big lie scheme, linking Lindell to people that also linked to Trump. But what this Trump appointed judge did was rule against the Trump Lindell position and then also personally rip Judge Cannon, the crony judge, in his ruling. So he notes here, in a footnote, Torstrud also appeared to offer a veiled brushback to a judge's decision in another high-profile search, the FBI's court-authorized seizure of records from Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida. There is a sound and well-established principle that a court should not exercise its equitable powers to interfere with or enjoin an ongoing and criminal investigation when the defendant will have the opportunity to challenge any defects in the prosecution of a trial court or on direct appeal. He wrote, quoting from an appeals court ruling that reversed aspects of U.S. District Court Judge Aileen's Cannon ruling temporary blocking investigation from accessing records, investigators from accessing records seized from Trump's Florida home in August. Rather, Torstrid said, the time for challenges to criminal processes is after an indictment is issued. Notably, Cannon took the precise approach Troistrud decried to block the Justice Department's criminal probe of the retention of highly sensitive national security documents at Trump's estate. The department is currently appealing her ruling and won earlier rounds of litigations at the appeals level. So you see what he did there, right? You see what this Trump pick again, this is also a Trump judge. So he's not the corrupt judge Cannon. He was a guy picked by Trump. And again, remember Trump, when he picks a judge, in his mind, he sees it as bribery. I am picking you so that if you ever have a ruling about me or my cronies that deals specifically with me and my broader schemes, you better rule the right way. And not only did this handpicked judge say F that, not only did they say screw that, but they also went ahead in their justification to tear down the very argument used by an actual Trump 
crony judge, not just Trump handpicked, but handpicked and crony judge Cannon to rip Mike Lindell. So this is fantastic to see. Trump, he can he can lie all he wants, but he's weak on the world stage because his corruption gets the best of him. And also he's weak at home because while he has a few judges in his pocket, not even all judges he picked are in his pocket and they're ruling against him and they're ruling against his corrupt judges.